Hey folks, so today I wanted to just show you a few time-saving things that you can do in Articulate Storyline to streamline your development process. So what I have here is I have a little shape that's going to be my container for content, and then I have three buttons that I've added in. Now the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to easily format your buttons so that you don't have to uh, duplicate them. So I don't want them to be blue. I want them to be, I don't know, let's see, this magenta color. And I want the outline to be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click our format painter and then click all of our objects that we want to change. Now, another thing that we're going to do is for this first button, we're going to add a trigger I want to show layer tab one and the user clicks button one. Now we're going to come back to this in a second. The next thing that I wanted to show you is, okay, so this is my tab. It's going to just be a container for text. So the text will change when the buttons are clicked. So instead of just putting in my own dummy text, you can put in equal lorem and then the two, the open parentheses and the close parentheses and hit enter and it will auto populate some lorem ipsum text. Now what I like to do to ensure consistency with my tabs is I like to create the first tab and then duplicate and rename. So I do that so that all of the, sorry, all of the text boxes are the same and then I can just go in and change the text. So in order for us to see the change, I'm just going to take out the first paragraph for the second one and then for the third one, I'm going to um, take out the first and second paragraph. And then that way they all look different. And we're gonna go back to our base layer so, so that was a quick tip for just duplicating layers so that you can maintain the consistency of, uh, of the look and feel of the layers. Now, this is really important when it comes to text, but also if you have a scrolling panel to ensure that you don't have to fiddle too much with the um, width or height. And also if you had say half of your, half of your slide is a text box and the other half is an image, you can just swap out the image. Um, really easily using this format. So what I'm going to show you here is how to copy your triggers so that you don't have to spend a whole lot of time um, fidgeting with these triggers. You can just um, select the trigger that you want to copy, then I'm going to select the button, paste. Select the button, paste. Now they all say tab one, all we have to do is change the drop down to the appropriate tab. So these are just some quick tips. One more that I wanted to um, show you before we before we go here is see how I have all three of these as buttons, um, individual buttons. I don't want them to. I want them to be selectable one at a time. So another thing you can do is highlight and select all of your buttons. You're going to right click select button set, see there's none right now, and you could use the default one, we will, or you could create a new set. So we're just gonna use the default one, button set one. And now what that does is it creates an effect that lets you only select one button at a time. So it's just as easy as that. And those are just some quick tips that I think can get you started in the process of streamlining your development approach. And hopefully you find some of these helpful. Hopefully there's at least one new tip that you've heard here. And check back tomorrow. I'm going to have a couple more tips.